with us, if you dare, on a terrifying journey through cells of madness, haunts of horror and fear. Come with us to this forsaken monument of crumbling stones which echoes the desolate cries of the damned. Descend with us to the forbidden chambers of the ancient pagan gods of wrath, where the devil's men perform the secret rites of the land of the Minotaur. Those who enter the forbidden chamber of the Minotaur must die. die, 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 die. This is Tom Seymour from VHS Massacre Radio. That, of course, was the trailer to the 1976 horror classic, Land of the Minotaur. And who was in Land of the Minotaur, you ask? Well, it's none other than Donald Pleasance of Halloween fame and uh, Peter Cushing, uh, you know, legendary Peter Cushing uh, from, uh, you know, Star Wars. You're probably asking, why, why am I reviewing this film? Well... I, I love physical media. I'm a huge fan of it, and streaming's good too. But um, my wife got me this uh, collection of 32 drive-in cult classics on DVD. That's right, on DVD. And so I watched this one called um, uh, Land of the Minotaur, and it was, it, it's a fascinating title. I th- believe the film got some backlash uh, because some of the taglines are... Half man, half beast, trapped in a world forgotten by time. So, the thing is, there's no real minotaur in it. It what it is, are, are these the, these sort of cultists, they worship the minotaur, and it it actually goes back to Minoan society, which predated Greek society, five thousand B.C. But that's where you get the minotaur myth and the labyrinth myth. So the Minotaur, the Minotaurus, is a, a mythical creature portrayed in, portrayed in classical times with the head uh, and tail of a bull and the body of a man. So, and that's associated with, with the labyrinth, and that is also part of that Minoan uh, myth. Eventually that worked its way into Greek mythology. I mean, it is Greek mythology, but it, it was derived from this slightly older society. Theseus defeats the Minotaur, which is a parallel to... Uh, Christ defeating Satan. So, uh, and and actually, the film, um, the uh, Land of the Minotaur, is actually also named The Devil's Men. The thing about this film is Roger Ebert called it Peter Cushing's worst film, which he's great in it. So I don't know what the problem is. Um, it is a Greek film. Um, it's shot. It's shot amongst real ruins. Um, it's probably shot in Crete itself which is where the Minoans first came to. Uh, their society apparently ended sometime around uh, 1450 uh, B.C. Some speculate that it was possibly a volcano in 1450 B.C. or um, possibly tsunami. What you have is essentially what Christians have been railing against uh, forever is this sort of pagan belief, right? And um, But in this... Uh, film it's actually a bunch of uh, Satanists there are these characters in the beginning and they're in these actual Greek ruins it's really really uh, looks like they shot in real Greek ruins which is pretty amazing and they're they're pretty clever with the way they shoot it they find this like keystone and they remove this keystone they jump down into this little cave area obviously that's like a you know they're they're marrying the two locations together with jumping down in this little cavern and then it opens up to this huge cave where there's this minotaur and the, there's a voice saying like those who have entered the cave will stay there forever and so it's kind of a slick setup and it's uh, pretty creepy peter cushing plays this 
Carpathian Baron. It was interesting to look at that. They threw in Carpathian myth too, which is sort of like vampire myth, pulling from various uh, creepy things. Um, so he plays uh, Baron Corifax, uh, and Donald Pleasance plays Father Roche. And so um, what happens is these children are kidnapped, and um, Donald Pleasant's character and his character Milo are on this quest to try to find these children. And so as this is going on, more and more kids are getting cap uh, captured, more and more people are getting captured, and you find out that they're being sacrificed in these sort of satanic rituals. And these people are dressed up in these sort of like hood hooded, like red hoods and blue hoods and... Um, and an occasional white hood, which obviously reminds you of like the KKK or something, but it's not there. It's uh, Satanism, but you know, I couldn't help, but see parallels to some of Stanley Kubrick's work, uh, specifically eyes wide shut and the shining. Um, and the connections there, I think are that in the shining, uh, they're in that hotel and there is a labyrinth and there's a lot of, uh, people that believe that, that Jack Nicholson actually himself represents the Minotaur and he is hunting that child, his own kid, within the labyrinth. He eventually freezes to death. So in that film, you could say, if you believe that, that that represents the sort of defeat of the Minotaur or the beast um, and that the, the innocent people um, are saved or make it out. So I thought that that was interesting too. And then, and then the crazy thing is Eyes Wide Shut have all these satanic scenes about these super elite people. I don't know if you, if, if you watched um, Eyes Wide Shut lately, it gets better and better every year. And one theory about Eyes Wide Shut is that it would truly was Stanley Kubrick's depiction of how the elite societies function, like giant masked orgies, with ritual and backwards playing music and all this satanic imagery. So Donald Pleasance plays this priest and they eventually find the stronghold of these sort of Satanists or devil's men. And they, um, they eventually infiltrate their temple and, uh, Donald Pleasance through the use of holy water and his crucifix managed to destroy the power of, of the, the devil's men and it's interesting, too, because they're supernatural. Like, they can take bullets. You could shoot at them. And the Minotaur itself, although is a statue, seems to talk to people. So there's a lot of um, interesting thing they do with supernatural elements here. There's something very cool about it. Is it a perfect film? No. I would love to see Vinegar Syndrome or something like that. I don't know if this film has been remastered. Um, but I would, I'd love to see this thing remastered because I... I imagine it would look pretty awesome. It is funny, the, the main character, Milo, who who sort of fights with the priest, alongside the priest. Um, if you've ever been to Astoria, uh, Queens, there's a lot of people like him who has sort of had that, that thick-haired, like salt and pepper, more salt than pepper, almost Afro slash soft mullet with dark eyebrows. This is probably what a Greek leading man looked like uh, in 1970s cinema. But back to Eyes Wide Shut, there is all these theories behind Eyes Wide Shut as well. Their main character is Thomas Hartford, and he is a doctor. And he is sort of on the brink of high society, you could say, because he's sort of gotten there by his own steam. His wife is played by Nicole Kidman, and um, he's sort of married up in a way, and he is sort of seeking something. He seems to be seeking sexual gratification, and so he keeps trying to find ways to make that happen. Uh, there's some imagery in it. Um, there's a, Nicole Kinman references how she fantasized about this sailor uh, having sex with her, and there is some th film theorists who believe that that actually represents the, the man in the Navy uniform actually represents Scientology, and represents um, uh, that the Satanists also represent this sort of like cult, sort of sexual um, behavior that Kubrick maybe probably was witness to as he navigated some of the, the power structures. Um, so whether you believe that or not, 
there, there's no question that if you watch Eyes Wide Shut, there is more going on than you could possibly imagine. Symbolism and star imagery. In any case, whatever you believe about these uh, films, some of the theories when you you know de- dig into them are pretty well thought out. There's a film called Room 237, um, which was about The Shining and other films of Stanley Kubrick's, which go into some of the weirder theories. A lot of them, I think, are pretty out there, um, but a few of them, I think, make sense in regard to what Kubrick was trying to get at. Well, so what I would say is I w- check out Land of the Minotaur. You're not going to be blown away by it, but um, if you're someone who's kind of just seen a lot of the horror films of the 70s and 80s, you're going to have to start digging in and finding rarer other films that you might be interested in. So Land of the Minotaur, I think, is a, a very cool thing to discover. Um, and it, it's, it, I think it is significant. I mean, uh, Peter Cushing and Donald Pleasance are icons, you know, in their own way. So check it out. Um, another good news, um, Lloyd Kaufman is going to appear on The Last Drive-In featuring Joe Bob Briggs. Um, Joe Bob Briggs has had uh, his show going for two seasons now. It is a massive success and a return to form for Joe Bob Briggs, who um, I think it had been the year 2000 since his last TV show. And um, he really blew the doors off the thing. I mean, the shutter crashed, I think, when they launched that series in the first place because so many people watched it. But he's bringing it all back around, and he's going to have B-Movie King Lloyd Kaufman on there. should be this Friday. Um, and what's really cool about that is that um, my film, VHS Massacre 2, the follow-up to... Um, VHS Massacre documentary about the decline of physical media in the video store era um, is coming out through Choma probably later in the year. And so the wonderful thing is it not only features Joe Bob Briggs, but it features Lloyd Kaufman. So I'm really excited that, you know, I don't know, I got to make a documentary with those two people in it. And uh, this Friday I get to watch them on a really cool show on Shudder. So I would say check it out if you haven't uh, subscribed to Shudder. Uh, it's it's totally worth it. I think it's like five bucks a month. And um, I've been watching all sorts of cool shows like Cursed Films is a cool show about um, different film shoots that were troubled. Um, you have uh, the you know Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. And um, there's a lot of cool um, – it, it's very well curated. So you could be watching Mandy one day. Um, and then watching uh, Vi another day, the Russian fairy tale movie with with amazing practical effects. Um, so there's a lot to offer there. Um, so I would check it out. Um, beyond that, um, voting has completed for Barebones International Film Festival. That was a, a festival that w- we were in competition um, for our film VHS Massacre Two. And um, so it was the email in vote. And so we're sort of all waiting for that to go down. And we're also waiting to hear back from the Telly Awards, which is really interesting, too. Um, Horror Hound Weekend, I think, is going to do a virtual film festival. So check out if you look up Horror Hound Weekend um, and you want to have a look at VHS Massacre 2, it's possible that they'll put the film behind a paywall just for that film festival. Um, So that's something to check out. So thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, please subscribe on Podbean and on Stitcher and on Spotify. Also, check out our YouTube channel and our Facebook page uh, and our Twitter. And uh, I'd like to really get the numbers up on this uh, podcast and get things going. And if you want to watch the original VHS Massacre 2 and you have Amazon Prime like everyone does during a pandemic... Watch VHS Massacre, the original uh, documentary, for free on Prime. Um, at this point, I think it's one of, it's considered one of the most popular VHS documentaries, and it is a bestseller with Trauma Entertainment. So that one actually did pretty well. Uh, so we're excited that the second one's coming out. Anyway, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.